Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in this video, we're going to show a whole bunch of different things about getting your domain set up in ClickFunnels 2.0, including towards the end, the ultimate thing that we're going to get to eventually is being able to have a root domain pointing directly at a funnel without having to have a path or anything else. So mydomain.com will go directly to the first page of a funnel. But in order to get there, we got to set up a whole bunch of other stuff ahead of time. So the very first domain I want to set up here, or subdomain in this case here, is going to point to our homepage, our site page, right here inside of what we would call our funnel hub or our workspace or our site. Everybody's calling it different names, even homepage inside of ClickFunnels, but it's the page that you would see here if you just type in, in this case here, Dan Havey, uh, dot my clickfunnels.com would resolve to my site page. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off here by going over to domains and we're going to go up to the right hand corner. We're going to click on our connect an existing domain and we're going to call this site dot cfmastermind.com. I've walked through this a couple of times just to make sure I had it right before going live on my filming here. And we're going to say add this to my site. Now what it's going to do is it's going to reach out to GoDaddy. It's going to find the fact that I do have this site registered at GoDaddy. It normally would say that on the screen but probably isn't because I've used this domain in the past to get this set up. And then it'll bring it to this page right here. Now for me personally, I have all my domains registered, registered at GoDaddy. That's where I've been buying them for 20 years. So they are all there. And then we're also going to run this thing through Cloudflare. So wherever you bought your domains, whether it's Namecheap, Bluehost, wherever you got them, it is fine, but it will look different than what I'm going to show you inside of GoDaddy. You're just going to need to find where you change your DNS records inside of your registrar. So what we're going to do on this page right here is we are not going to say start the domain setup. We do not want the automated system running on this and we don't want this turned on either. I don't think it'll make a difference, but I still want it turned off. And we're just going to come up here and we're just going to click on where it says clicking here. And we're going to click on this because what we're looking for to start off with is this verification record right there. So we're going to leave this alone for right now. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to our GoDaddy account in my case here. You're going to find the domain that you want to associate with CF 2.0. And in my case here, I'm going to click on manage the DNS. And you're going to see where your DNS records currently are. And somewhere on the page is going to say, do you want to change your name servers? And I'm going to say, yes, I do. And I want to enter my own name server. So we got GoDaddy ready to go right here. So the next thing we have to do is go over to Cloudflare. If you don't have an account, get an account. They're absolutely free. And then navigate to add a site and we will go over here to add a site. Now in this case here, we are dealing with just the root domain. When we put this into 2.0, we put in our subdomain of site with the root domain of cfmastermind.com. In Cloudflare right here, at first off, we're just going to be looking at our root domain. So we want to type that in and click on add the site. And then we're going to come down to the bottom or wherever it is, click on the free account and continue. And so now what it's doing is it's reaching out to GoDaddy and it's pulling in any records that it thinks it needs from GoDaddy at this point. Now normally it would come in with absolutely nothing. Let me see what did it pull in here. Pulled in a bunch of stuff because like I said, I've done this in the past. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete these out of here because the last time I did this, it actually brought in absolutely nothing at all. And uh, sometimes it'll bring in nothing. Sometimes it'll bring in three or four records. Sometimes it'll bring in a whole slew of records because especially if you're running uh, email through this domain, it may have all kinds of records attached to it. TXT, um, SRV, MX records may have all that stuff. And generally speaking in the past, what I always said is all that, leave, leave that alone. If there's C name records, leave those alone. But I always said if there's A records, you want to delete them. But here is my caveat on that. I was working with somebody the other day who was running a whole bunch of apps and all of those apps were using A records. 
And so because the guy insisted that all of his domains, all of the stuff he was doing be on the exact same root domain, we couldn't erase those A records. Generally speaking, especially if it's your domain and you know that those A records are not attached to anything else, and they wouldn't be if you just purchased the domain or you're just using it normally, you don't, you're not an application builder and you're not attaching a bunch of stuff to it, generally speaking, you want to delete all your A records. If you go through this entire process and there are any A records on there that you did not delete and it does not work, then take a screenshot, and you should always do this ahead of time anyway. As soon as all the records uh, show up on the screen, just take a screenshot so that in the worst case, you can always come back and uh, type those A records back in. And then the other two caveats I will give you is at any time, you can come into Cloudflare and you can disconnect the domain from Cloudflare. Also, you can go back into your domain registrar and you can disconnect it from pointing at Cloudflare as well. As soon as you do that, it will set everything back to the way it was before you ever started doing any of this. So don't worry, you're not going to mess anything up. At least you shouldn't be because everything should be set back to the default if need be at the end. So all those caveats out of the way, let's continue here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say we need to point, we're going to do a text record and we're going to point the at sign which means the root domain at this verification right there so we're going to just grab a hold of this and we're going to add a record and we're going to come down here to a text record we're going to put in the at sign and then we're going to paste in that verification record right there and then we are going to click on save and we're going to click on continue what this is for is so that we can verify that you actually own this account. So the next thing we need to do is we need to copy out these two new name servers. We need to go over to GoDaddy or whoever your registrar is, and we need to paste them in right here. We will go grab the second one by clicking on the link to copy it. We will paste that in and we will save. Now you want to want to consent to this again, Every registrar is going to be a little bit different. With GoDaddy, it takes about 30 seconds to a minute or so before this purple bar will go away. So we'll come back to that in a minute. And then now we'll come down here and we'll say done. Check the name servers. Then it gives you a couple things to walk through. And you want to make sure each of these is turned on. So automatic HTTPS rewrites. We want that turned on. Because we always want everybody going to the secured uh, version of the site, the secured socket layer, SSL. We want to turn on all the minification. This helps to speed it up by compressing the code. And then Broadly also helps to speed everything up. And so now we are going to click on finish. We're going to come back here. Then we're going to come over here and go back to our DNS. And we're going to see the one line we put in there and the Cloudflare name servers right there. Let's come back into GoDaddy. We can reload this page here. And we're going to now see the name servers were populated in here as well. So the next step is to come back now to, uh, to 2.0. And we're going to say we want to validate our ownership. And at first there are some issues. Let me click on validate the ownership again. Okay, so now we'll show the DNS tables. Okay, sometimes it takes a couple seconds for it to work. Now we got a little green check mark. Everything is good to go. So now we need to do a second text record. So we're gonna copy this first bit right there. We're gonna add a record. It's going to again be a text record. And we are going to paste in that name Come back over here, grab this big chunk of code, and we will drop that in there, and we will click on save. And then we're gonna do this one more time. We're gonna do a C name record. We're gonna point our subdomain of site to this bit of contact uh, information right here. I don't know what I'm saying. There we go. Let um, me see, I got a cat here is bugging me. So we got that. We're going to type in the word site right there. And the target is going to be our ClickFunnels account and we will turn off the proxy. We don't need that on. And now we will click on save. And that is it. At this point now, we should have done everything we need in order to connect not only our main site, 
but also, uh, or in this case here, our subdomain of site to our 2.0 account. And also this part right here is your, what they call your DKIM key. And we'll see that in a second. So now let's go back into here. We're going to say we want to check our connection. And now we got three check marks and it says it's adding the SSL. What I have found recently in the ones I put up, it takes about 10 minutes for this SL, SSL to kick in. One day it did it almost instantaneously. So we're gonna leave that for a second. We're gonna come over here to our marketing. We're gonna come up to our DKIM keys. And we're going to see right here, cfmastermind.com, got a check mark. That means that our DKIM key's already been activated. In the past, that had been really difficult to get those fixed up. Now, again, almost instantaneous. So we'll come back into our domains. And let's see here, we are definitely still securing. So I'm going to pause for a minute. So as we're waiting for this subdomain to be secured, let's go in and set up another subdomain because we want to set up another one that we're going to be able to use to direct a funnel to. So that's our next step here. So we're going to say, we're just going to funnel one for lack of a better name dot, uh, what was it here? CFmastermind.com. And we will click on continue and we will add the domain. Again, it knows it was registered at GoDaddy. And again, we're going to do the same things here. We're going to uncheck that. We're going to click here and we are going to show our DNS records. We already had validated our ownership, so we can just keep clicking away here. And now what it's saying here is we need to point again a text uh, at, at our text record and then funnel one as our C name. And now if you look at this one here, we have host pointing at, it says DV or GVD. So let's see if that is the same over here. Uh, let me see here, that's our verification. Let me go back over here. Now text record with the at pointing at, yeah, that is our verification right there. And it's the same verification. So that one we don't have to worry about. We just need to come in here and do that C name record again. So we're gonna say C name. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna say funnel one, which is our subdomain. And then let's just go back over here and copy this again. We'll come in, we will pop that in there and turn that off and now we will click on save and now we can go back in to 2.0 we can say we want to check our connection check 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 we will check our connection again and now we have our ssl certificate securing for that as well so let's just pop out of here and see if that first one verified yet no it did not so let me pause again for a second and now while we're waiting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a third subdomain. And that one's going to be the www subdomain because I was talking to someone the other day and they said that no matter what, when they see just a regular root domain, they always put in www. And I thought, hmm, you know, that is a corner case that we really need to deal with in a couple of different ways. So the first way we're going to deal with it is we're just going to essentially send it to the, the site domain right here to to, well, we're going to send it to the site page is what we're going to do. And we're going to do that by connecting it exactly the same way as we have connected all the rest of them. So all we have to do is come in here. We're going to say, add a record. We're going to come down. We're going to say C name. We're going to go triple W again. And I think what I had in there will work. We can do that and we can click on save but before we do that first i forgot to do the first step in here which is to say www.cfmastermind.com let's do this part first we will click on continue add the domain and turn this off again click this boom it's already been verified validate show the DNS. And again, we need to do what I just did over here. So we got that. Let's click on save. Now we can come back in here, check the connection and let's give it a little time to propagate. There we go. Pretty fast right there. And we'll come back out. 
Okay, now that our site subdomain has been connected, what we want to do is we want to make sure that this is associated with the site itself because when somebody types in site.cfmastermind.com just by itself, we want them resolving to the main page inside of this workspace. So we do that simply by coming over here. Obviously, we go to overview and we come here, click on the three dots, go down to site settings. And then right down here, I had already set this up. Um, it probably would have been the setting there originally at your ClickFunnels subdomain. But now what we're going to do is we're going to send that to the site.cfmastermind.com subdomain. So again, if anybody types this in, they will automatically come to that main page. And so we'll do that. And then also because of the way we have things set up right now, you'll see in a minute that as we go to the funnel one and the triple W, they will also resolve to exactly the same page. And so, so far, these two have already, uh, already been uh, connected and it's taken about 10 minutes in, in real time uh, for the two of them to get connected. So let's see where we are with these two first. So let's go into an incognito page and see what we come up with. So first off, let's just go to cfmastermind.com and what we should do is get an error page and that is exactly what we got. And now let's see if we go to site.cfmastermind.com, this should take us to the site page for this workspace, the home page, the hub page, whatever you wanna call it. And then let's also go here to funnel one dot cfmastermind.com and again is going to bring us to the site page because at this point we haven't told it to go anywhere else so with 2.0 every single one of the uh, every single one of the subdomains that you set up here will always automatically direct to that site page so now we're going to start moving a little forward and show you some ways to get rid of that functionality now, it's been about three days since I started recording this video, and since then I went in and I deleted the entire second half of it because there was a lot of, a lot of issues in there I was having. But also in the meantime, I also managed to break my wrist, so it might be a little difficult for me to type and, and film this, but we're going to do the best that we can over here. So what I did is I also put up, I started putting up this chart because I know that things are going to start getting complicated. So what we've done so far is we pointed our site at ClickFunnels. We pointed our Funnel 1 subdomain at ClickFunnels and our Triple Dub subdomain at ClickFunnels. And that's what these first three lines represent right here is the DNS that we went in there. We put in this and we pointed it at, at ClickFunnels. I'm not going to put in there that we pointed at ClickFunnels. So if somebody enters in site.cfmastermind.com, they're going to go to the main page on the site. Same thing if they put in Funnel 1 or triple W, they're all going to end up in the same place. But where they actually resolve to is, in this case here, it's site.cfmastermind funnel1 and triple W.cfmastermind. They don't all resolve to the site.cfmastermind.com, which is where I would have thought they would all resolve to. And I guess if we really wanted them to resolve there, we could change some of the page rules that we're going to set up going forward. But again, Again, the whole idea is just to have your site going to the main site and then the others going to other places. Well, actually, in this case here, we want the triple W to actually resolve to the site in that case as well. But let me just show you this here. So if I just put in funnel one, well, actually, I don't think we've shown the W, triple W here yet. So if we put in just the triple W in the front of this here, and I guess I didn't need to delete all that we put in the triple W like that, you're going to see it doesn't even show you the subdomain because the subdomain is triple W. Uh, that's how the browser is going to do it. But if we put in funnel one right there, it will show you the subdomain in I'm, I'm in Chrome in incognito mode here, if that would make any difference. So now we have these three subdomains all resolving to the first page in the funnel. But then the next question becomes is if somebody types in just cfmastermind.com, 
where do we want them to go? And in this first case, what I'm going to say is I want them going to site.cfmastermind.com because right now, as we had already looked at, if we actually just do it here, less typing with my broken hand, uh, let me see, here we go, cfmastermind.com is going to bring us to an error page, which is exactly what you would expect. So in this case here, we have to not only have our DNS set up, which we already do, um, then we also have to put in a page rule. And on that page rule, we have to uh, put in that we want the cfmastermind.com to resolve to or to forward to site.cfmastermind.com. So let's come back over here. And, oh, I guess I did forget one thing here. So what I did in order to get this to work is we did have to put in the DNS record for the CF Mastermind. And, again, we took that and we put in the CNAME record and we just have cfmastermind.com, the entire root domain, pointing at ClickFunnels at this point. And then we're going to get to go into our page rules. And I should have some set up in here already. So let's see which one do we need. We need the one where we got the root domain pointing to site.cfmastermind.com. And so that one is this bottom one right here. So let's turn that on and then let's take a look at what this looks like. Uh, so we have, we just type in here, cfmastermind.com, nothing else, no asterisks, no nothing. We'll get to asterisks in a minute, which are wild cards that we can use in there. And we're just saying a forwarding URL, permanent redirect, and we want that just to go to site.cfmastermind.com, and we will then turn that on, and it'll have a nice little green check mark there, and these other two, we'll get to them in a minute. Now, just a couple of words of warning on these page rules as we go through them is, first off, inside of Cloudflare, you only get three page rules for free, and that's okay because you probably don't need more than really one, maybe two, in order to get this to set up, depending on the case that you're looking for. Because you have to think about where do you want certain things to resolve to and generally speaking you're not going to probably need more than a couple because what we also want to do is instead of just using this root domain that we have here we want to be able to use other domains and direct those into our funnels as well so then we'll have to set up more domains and then uh, put up page rules and tell it to forward into there as well so for right now we just have cfmastermind.com resolving to the site so let me see what I get here. Let's take off the HTTPS. Let it add that back on itself. And there we go. Now we resolved to that site itself right there. So there is one case right there where we can now take that just that root domain and we can push it to the site. Now let's say that somebody puts in here cfmastermind.com but they have a path at the end of it and I use the example here of Ninja Hacks Reviews and then it'll push it to that actual page. So what we have to do is we're going to come into our ClickFunnels account and let me just show you what I'm talking about here. Oops, I wanted to go here to a page and in this case here, now in fact, let's just grab one here. So we got migrate to page. Now nah, I don't want to use that one. Um, well, let me just use the one I was using. So let me go to the overview because that's where I pulled this up from. And I'm going to go to customize. And so I was building a funnel hub for the FBC program. And I was just using the re uh, reviews. But let's go down here. Let's just say we want to use our resources page. So we'll let this load up. And then if I got everything working right, it should, um, let's see here, does this resolve to our correct page? It does. So let's go to the live page. So this is what you always want to do is you want to make sure you have the actual for real page. And so if you go to the live page, you know for sure that is exactly what you have. So we're going to click on copy this and then we're going to go into our page rules. And so what we're looking for here is cfmastermind.com slash asterisk. We want that to then resolve to what will be our resources, not our reviews. So we're going to come in here. Let me see. Do I have that pattern in here yet? I do not. And do I, can I add some more page rules? Sure, if I want to pay five bucks. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to delete one of these out of here. 
we'll delete that out. And in fact, this is the pattern we want to use right there. So let's just use that one. And in fact, this is exactly what I was looking for. Like I said, it's been a couple of days since I looked at this. So I was getting a little confused. So what we want to do is let's go back in here. So we want to have our cfmastermind.com slash asterisk. And we want that to resolve to site.cfmastermind.com slash dollar sign. So here is what this information over here on the left is what we want to put into our page rules. This information over here on the right is what we're going to see in the real world when we enter in our URL. So let's come over here. Let's just open this up so you see a little bit better. So again, we have cfmastermind.com slash asterisk. And again, the asterisk represents a wild card. And we always do the same thing, forwarding URL, 301 redirect. And we want that to go to site.cfmastermind.com slash dollar sign one. And the dollar sign one means grab a hold of the first asterisk up here in the um, the URL you entered. Had we put in two asterisks, like sometimes we'll put an asterisk at the beginning of it, then if you wanted the second asterisk, you would put in dollar sign two right down here at the bottom. But this is the one we want, so we're just going to save our page rule right there. And so then again, what are we looking to do here? We just got cfmastermind.com slash what we're looking for. So let me paste in that URL that I grabbed and then let's take off the end of this here or the beginning of it, I should say. And so now if we don't have the subdomain in there at all, but we still want to send it to the subdomain, there we go. Now we ended up on the resources page. So we had a case here now where we just put in the root domain and the path and we had it resolve it then to a page, a standalone page or a page that was associated with the funnel hub in this case right here. But now let's say we wanted to go to the next level here and we wanted to go to cfmastermind.com slash go. So you're doing a webinar or something and you say, okay, we'll go to cfmastermind.com slash go and then it will resolve them then to a page in this case here. So we're gonna have them resolve right back to this same page. So how do we get that set up? We need to go into our page rules again. In this case here, I'm going to just create a new one because I have some room. And we're just going to put in cfmastermind.com slash go right here. So we're not going to put in an asterisk. And we're going to do our forwarding URL again. And it's going to be a 301 redirect. And then we are going to paste in, oops, that's the wrong thing. So we're going to paste in the entirety of that URL. So we got the HTTPS, we got the site, and we got the Ninja Hacks resources at the end there because that's where we want our route plus the path of go to resolve to. So let us go there then and let's just doctor up this one here and put in go and we will take off all the everything in the beginning and then we will hit enter and you see there instantaneously it resolved us back there and just to double check that i just want to open up a new incognito window and paste and go there and boom right there we go so there we go now we got a we have our root domain with just a very simple little path afterwards, which we then re resolve to any page inside of ClickFunnels. Now, one more thing I'll show you here on the page rules is you have priorities here. So you got your position one, two, and three, and you have to look at it and you have to say, okay, which one of these rules is most important to me? Now, let's say I had these top two rules turned on and I say, if somebody typed in uh, cfmastermind.com slash go, I want them to go here. So I would want that in the first position because otherwise it would be slash um, slash asterisk and then uh, it would put the go in there and then the go would be replaced down here for the dollar sign one. So if I moved this one up to the top and I put in cfmastermind.com slash go, I don't think it's going to work right because like I said, it's going to put go here, it's going to put go at the end 
And then, you know, actually it may still work because once we put go here at the end, then it may get picked up on the second condition here. I'm not sure if it'll go from one condition to the next. It will not apparently go from one page rule to the next. I'm not absolutely positive on that, but definitely this is the case where you want to look at it and say, okay, which one is most important? Basically, which one is most specific that's going to get me to the results that I want? And generally speaking, you're probably only going to have one page rule on most all of your pages. So the next corner case is for people who decide they, they're going to type in triple W whether you told them or not because they are, well, they, they just think that that's what they're supposed to do is they put a triple W in front of everything. So we got to set up the page rule for this condition right here. So if they type in triple W dot your root domain slash any kind of a path, they will resolve to where you want them to resolve to. So let us do that. And so let me just come over here and make this a little easier on myself. I will copy this and we're going to, we're going to reuse this bottom one here. So actually let's turn these other two off and we'll reuse the bottom one. And so we're going to paste that in and then where do we want them to resolve to in this case here, we want them to, so we're going to have them enter this. We're going to have them resolve to here and we will copy that. And I'm sorry, things are a little slow here with my ability to type. So we'll save the page rule. And so then what we're saying here is if somebody enters this URL right here, so let's just copy that URL. And I'll go back and show you, tell you what the other means as well it will resolve to here as well and bring us to this page. So what this is really saying here is let me go into the page rule and let me open this up. What it's saying here is we have an asterisk in the beginning and we have an asterisk here at the end. The reason I put the asterisk in the beginning when I put in the triple W is because if they're going to put in a triple W, they may also put in HTTPS or HTTP and they may or may not get in the colon colon uh, or the colon and the slash slash. And so we put that in there just in case they do type something in front of the triple W. And then the secondary uh, asterisk here, the second one is of course to pick up any path that they might put in. And then down here at the bottom, we put in dollar sign two to signify the asterisk in the top line that would be the path. And so then when somebody types in www dot whatever here, uh, we come up with that. And then let's say we're just going to come in here and we're going to put in, let's do this. Let's make this H T T P. And then we'll take this off at the end here and make this resources instead. And now brings us to this page and it resolved everything properly. So again, if you're concerned about people doing the triple W thing, you definitely want to have this on your page. And then I guess the next case here would be is, uh, again, if somebody puts in the triple W or anything else in front of the root domain with a go, then we want to send them somewhere as well. So that's what this would look like here. So if somebody types in, like we had up here, we, we sent them from cfmastermind.com slash go, we sent them to an actual page inside of our site. We've got the same thing over here. Somebody types in whatever, triple W, cfmastermind.com slash go. Uh, because again, you're in a webinar, you tell them to put in cfmastermind.com slash go to go to your sales page and sign up for, the, for whatever you're signing them up for. Um, they mess that up. And so we're going to then send them to our resources page in our example right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, copy this right here. And let's drop that over here. And let's see if we can get them to resolve to where we want them to go. And for some reason, I cannot get this page rule to resolve for me. It just keeps spinning and spinning. And then eventually it will time out after like minutes. Um, so that's kind of strange that this one here won't resolve, but this one resolved and this one resolved just fine. Everything else is working just fine. For some reason, 
This one won't resolve. It's not throwing any kind of errors. So at this point here, we're going to move on. Just be aware that this pattern right here may not be um, something that we can um, guard against and be able to send somebody to specifically where we want them to go. Now, the next thing we have to talk about is how the funnels work in here. And as we all know, we can come into any one of our funnels. So just come in here and you come up into the right-hand corner and you can change what the domain is here. So let's say we want to associate this funnel with our funnel1.cfmastermind.com. And I'll just click on discard because I already had it associated. And then you see up here you have a domain up at the top. But we also know that if we come in and let's just uh, grab a hold of this link. And this is, this is what happens after this thing sat there long enough and finally timed out. Um, but we go there to funnel1.cfmastermind.com. As we saw earlier, it resolves to our site page. Well, what we want it to do is we want it to resolve to this page right here. Share. So let us grab a hold of this and we're going to copy that link because this is where we want this thing to resolve to once we put in our funnel1.cfmastermind.com. And I think that's the biggest thing that most everybody who's watching this video is probably looking for. So I'm going to show you a couple of different corner cases of how we can work this out. So where do we want this person to resolve to? We want them to resolve to this right here. And that should be exactly what we're looking for. So then again, when somebody types in the funnel one, we want them going over to this specific page right there. So in order to set that up, we're going to come into our page rules. And in this case here, what we're going to do is we're going to delete out this bottom page rule. And I will just redo this top one. So where do we want them to go? We want them to resolve to that first page of the funnel. And then what did we have up here? Let me just copy this out. And we will paste that in. And we will save that page rule. And so we got our page rule right there. And so now let's come over here. And let's open up a new tab. And let's just paste in what I had there. And it did not bring us to the right place yet. And now what I will tell you with all the testing that I have done is that I won't be able to get this one to resolve to where I want it to go either. And if we come back over here, so now we have two cases where we have this one won't resolve and this one won't resolve. And I even came in here and I went so far as with the funnel one as I went into my page rules. I mean, I'm sorry, my DNS and I deleted it out of there, and it still would not work. And so what I pretty much decided and came up with a conclusion on is everything from here up works just fine, but this row right here, that, that case will not work, and let me just make that red. And then this case here as well will not work. And so that's okay, because what we're gonna do next is we're going to say, all right, let's use a different domain. And again, I think that's pretty much what most people are looking to do is let's use a different domain and be able to point that domain directly at our funnel. So let's take a look at that next. So before we go further, what I want to do is I want to set that funnel one back in here as a subdomain. We did not take it out of ClickFunnels, so I don't have to go through the process of doing that. I just added the CNAME record back in here because if you recall, we associated this funnel with that domain. So I want to make sure that is continuing to work. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to grab a different domain that we have already set up inside of Cloudflare and we're going to come over to the DNS and what you're going to see in the DNS here is you're going to scratch your head and you're going to think I'm crazy when you see this but at the end we're going to test it a different way but um, I'll just flip it over here and we'll see if you see where I'm crazy and where I'm crazy is right here it says target.clickfunnels.com that's CF 1.0 and what I found as I was testing this is first off with this domain, I originally set it up onto 2.0 and you can see here the target for 2.0 is right there and I had the subdomain of hub pointing to it. 
And of course, I got the verification and the DKIM keys down here as well. But then as I was testing and testing and testing, I said, well, what I have to do is I have to point my root domain at a target somewhere, but I don't necessarily want to put it at 2.0 or do I? So I said, well, let's just point it at 1.0 and let's see if we can get this thing to work. So I pointed the root at two at, at 1.0 and I left the proxy on and then I also pointed the triple W to the root domain. So if somebody types in triple W dot funnelcodesecrets.com, it will automatically go to funnelcodesecrets.com, and then wherever we are forwarding that, then it will just go right along with it. So that's what I have set up here. Like I said, at the end, what I want to do is come back in and test to see if we can also make this the ClickFunnels 2.0 target without directly connecting it to it, of course. And I should be able to because I did it with a uh, customer the other day and we were able to get that to work as well. Uh, but this is just fine unless the only problem I would say here and the only caveat I would have is that if you are using a domain on 1.0, then really none of this would work because if you're trying to point a root domain at this 2.0 funnel, you don't want to connect it to 1.0 in the first place. So if you're using a domain that had been connected to 1.0, take that down and then you still might run into some problems because I know some people who had domains that had been on 1.0 and moved them to 2.0 were having issues and if you'd run into that problem, reach out to ClickFunnels support or just grab yourself a different domain that was never actually in 1.0. This one probably was in 1.0 at some point. So let's go into our little records here. So what we're saying here is somebody types in funnelcodesecrets.com we want them going over to that domain that we had. And so what we're going to do is we're now going to go into our page rules and we're going to set this up as we always would. So we're just going to say if somebody goes to that root domain and again, no matter what path they put on the end, it's not going to matter because they're going to resolve to again, the first page of that funnel that we had right there. So let's just grab this little bit right here and let's open up a new incognito window. There we go. Let's paste that in and cross our fingers. And there we go. Went straight away to that first funnel step. Now, of course, you don't have to go to the first funnel step. You can go to any funnel step you want. Or reality is you can go to any URL you want. You could come back over here. You could say, I want to go to google.com whenever somebody goes to this particular uh, URL right there. Now, or a root domain in this case here. Now, let's say we're going to do the exact same thing, but we want to send them to uh, funnelcodesecrets.com slash go. And we can send them, of course, to the exact same destination. So we'll just say go if you want to put a root or I'm sorry, a path at the end of it. So we will save that. We'll come over here. We can paste this in. And oops, that's not what I wanted. I want to paste it, but not go right away because we want to put the path on the end of it. And there you go. Resolves to the same funnel step. Okay, so now we're going to test if we can get this to work with the triple W. Boom, that worked. And it was because I came in here already and I set up a page rule. So I got the asterisk, triple W, funnelcodesecrets.com slash asterisk, pointing again to there. So even though we set it up over here in the DNS, that we got our www pointing at funnel code secrets, even when you set this up for 1.0, you still have to... Uh, to, you know, make sure you also put in the page rule in order to get it there too. So let me add that to the list. And then one more test here. We're going to set up another page rule for the triple W version with it, with the slash go as the path at the end. And that resolves there as well. So let's take a look what I had here for that. So then we have the triple W and let me make sure I had saved that page rule and let me go back and test it one more time. 
and it's working just fine. But again, as I look at this here, realistically, because we have the asterisks here at the end and we have the go here at the end, no matter what we're saying to go here, but let's say you had one where it was funnelcodesecrets.com slash go, and then you had sprint and help and you know whatever as different paths, you'd be sending them to different pages, not necessarily to funnels. So if you had one that was more of a generic one where you wanted, okay, everybody who kind of gets here by default or gets here kind of as, you know, you think of it in terms of like a 404 page, somebody kind of, they type in funnelcodesecrets.com in any one of the many variations that you could put in there with HTTP in the beginning instead of the HTTPS. If it's got a triple W, not a triple W, maybe they even, you know, typed in something else in there in the beginning or even at the end you could set this up really and think of this as like a 404 error page and you can send them to anywhere you wanted to at that point and in fact i think if you were to just come in here and essentially you cannot you can't put an asterisk right at just the beginning at least i don't think you can let's let's see here if we can do just an asterisk right there and then um, let's save this page and so then if we just go to funnelcodesecrets.com and let's uh, let's do this. Let's go to funnelcodesecrets.com and we'll put in any kind of path here at the end. Let me see. So that does still resolve us to there. And let's uh, paste this in again. And at the end again, we'll put in a bunch of garbage. But at the beginning... We will put in HTTP colon slash slash. That should get us there as well. Let's do this again. And let's put some just absolute. Let's put any kind of path in the beginning here. So they screwed up the path name that they're trying. I'm sorry, not the path name. The subdomain that they're trying to put in. They screwed up the path name. And okay, so we finally found it where it finally kills it right there. But so, um, so that probably isn't necessary. Probably just go back to where we had the triple W in there and just be happy with that. And now the very last thing I wanted to test here was to come over to our DNS and we had our target.clickfunnels.com right there. And so what I want to do is, let me see here, I want to copy this. And then we will edit this one and we will paste in that new target and we will turn off the proxy on there because I don't need that. Um, confirm change. Yes, I want to confirm that change. And then this one right here, let us just turn that proxy off, but we will still leave the triple W pointing at funnel code secrets, funnel code secrets pointing over here. And then that should be good. And I'll give it a minute or so just to propagate and then we'll test it. So we're going to test here first off with funnelcodesecrets.com and see if it resolves there. So I had to make sure I went back in here, put in my page rule again with funnelcodesecrets.com pointing to that root domain. And so let's paste and go. And boom, straight away there. So that seems to be working just fine. What was our next one here? We had slash go. And so we need to set that up as a page rule first. No, we already had that here as a page rule. I even have the triple W in there. Did not have the triple W there. That's fine. Um, let's try this again. We will paste that in there. And instead of that asterisk at the end, we're going to put in the go. And it actually says just HTTP there. Um, but let's see, what does it resolve to? That's good. Did I mess up and put just an HTTP somewhere? I may, may have just come in when I was copying this. That's, that's fine. And then, um, all right, we had already tested that and that. So it does appear that it is working just fine with having it pointing to uh, 2.0 as well. But like I said, that root domain has to point somewhere. But again, we're not connecting it the root itself is not being connected to 1.0 or to 2.0. Of course, we can't connect it as a root domain to 2.0. Only subdomains as the recording of this can go to 2.0. But on uh, 1.0, like I said, we could point it over there. But if you do point it over there, do not connect it to 
1.0 because it will then cease to work over here. Okay, so if you managed to last this long in the training, I want to show you then the finale of what we really want to be doing here. So with our DNS, we're going to go here. And so this is, again, the funnel code secrets, not the um, CF mastermind that the site is on and all that. So this is a an external, let's think of it, an external third-party URL you have out there, domain, I should say, out there that you want to then point towards your funnel inside of 2.0 so this is how we're going to set it up again you don't really need you don't really need the hub part here you don't need the domain key and you don't need this you would only need this if this domain was also had a subdomain of the domain had a subdomain that was connected to 2.0 so in reality all you need is this one right here this c name record and you may or may not need this c name record i'm not actually positive but it doesn't seem to hurt to put it in there and then on your page rules, what you want to do is have then your rootdomain.com or your rootdomain slash asterisk pointing towards the first page in your funnel or wherever you want this uh, domain to resolve to. Like I said, it could be it could be a blog post if you wanted to be. It could be a course. It could be any standalone page. It could be any page in any funnel. It doesn't really matter. So you want to have that one right there so that the root goes to the page you want to go to. Then you want it to be set up so that any version of triple W will also go there because like I said earlier, a lot of people just instinctively type in triple W or HTTPS colon slash slash triple W. And so again, we want any of those kind of patterns to be going to there as well. And again, we want them on the page like this in this order and both of these would be turned on. Now, if you also want to have the functionality of being able to say something like, uh, like again in a webinar or something like that, you're going to say funnelcodesecrets.com slash go. Then you want to put the go at the end of there and then again point them to where you want it to resolve. But in this case, then we want to turn that one on and we want to make sure that this one is at the top. So we're going to pull that up to the top because we want it to come in. Like I said, if you read this up here, as I highlighted earlier, um, that it will only go to, or it'll only trigger one of these. So if we're coming in here and we want it to go to the go subdomain or go path first, we want it to go there. If it doesn't pick that up, then it will pick up one of these other two and send them there as well. Just in case they typed in something else up here, like maybe somebody put in triple W in front of the funnel code secrets.com. This one down here will pick it up and um, send them to the same place. Now, let's say you had funnelcodesecrets.com, as I said earlier, slash, and you want to use two, three, four, five different paths. You could do that in here, but again, first off, you're gonna have to come up here, you're gonna have to buy some more page rules, and then you would then also stack all of the ones with a path up here at the top, but I don't know why you would use multiple paths to well, I, I guess I guess if you're using one root domain, you could have multiple paths going to multiple different funnels. So for an extra five paths, it's five dollars a month. So that may be a good way to get that set up in here as well. That way, you only have one domain. You're paying five bucks a month extra in order to have six seven, eight, whatever it would look like, different URLs all being able to point into different funnels. So I think I covered every possible way that I can get this set up. Uh, but if I missed anything, let me know. If I wasn't clear, I know this is a very complicated subject. That's why as I went along, I tried to put together this little cheat sheet so we could all uh, stay ahead of the game and, and know what I'm putting in. So again, this stuff over here, especially from line 10 down, this is what I'm putting into the page rules. The first three up here, these were just purely the DNS records and everything down here was the existing DNS records plus page rules down here. And then when somebody enters this into their browser address bar, this is where it should resolve to just to make it clear on what this chart was about. So if you have any questions, let me know.